Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss individual retirement accounts, also known as IRAs. What is the big idea of an IRA? Well, let's talk about if you are an employee first. If you are an employee and you work for a company, there's a good chance, not necessarily, but there's a good chance that you have some sort of a retirement plan, especially medium and large size companies, either a 401k or a 403b. 403b is mostly for educators. What is that for? Well, when you work, when you have your energy to work, you're still fairly young and you are contributing to your, uh, you are contributing to the economy, you're going to be making money, you're going to be making wages. So what's going to happen? In addition to your current wages, you're going to put money away for later. Later is for your retirement. So your company might have what we called 401k. You put money, also your employer your company that you work for will put some money for you for later and later is when you retire you can sit on the beach and enjoy your retirement and you will have some sort of an income now to discuss more retirement plan i have a whole session about retirement plan the various retirement plans but this is the idea is to put money away for later now let's assume you are not an employee or your company does not have a good 401k plan so sometimes they could have various types of 401k plan what can you do? So I'm going to assume here you're not even an employee. You work for yourself or you work for several companies and you work part time. Regardless, the government gives you the option to do what? To save money for yourself for retirement. So that's why it's called individual retirement accounts. It means you as an individual can open this account and contribute money to it. Now, how much can you contribute? Well, you can contribute the lesser of 6,500 or 100% of your earned income. As an individual, you can contribute every year. If you make more than $6,500 in earnings, you can contribute up to 6,500. It's not only that. The 6,500 is deductible, and this is important. It's deductible for adjusted gross income. And on the next slide, I will show you where it goes specifically on the 1040 to show you, not on the 1040, on the tax form, to show you specifically the benefit of the IRA deduction. So it's going to give you a deduction today. So let's assume you contribute 6,500 and your tax rate is 30%. If we take 6,500 times 0.3, you already saved on your taxes this year 1,950 in savings today. Plus, this money is invested. Now, if you are married and you have a spousal, you and your spouse can contribute 6,500 times 2, which equal to 13,000. Now, the numbers I'm using is for the year 2023. If you're viewing this recording in the year 25, 26, 27, the number will change. So don't, don't assume that this is fixed. It will change. Also, if you are a person that's above the age of 50, the government allows you to make an additional $1,000 contribution. Again, this number could change, but usually this will stay the same. Why? Because once you get closer to your retirement, they want to encourage you to just to catch up on savings. So that's why they allow you to contribute an additional 1000 So you can contribute up to 7500 So that's good. They give you an additional deduction. Now, before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now, deductible IRA contribution might be reduced if the taxpayer is an active participant in another qualified plan. So notice what I said earlier. I said, let's assume um, you work for small companies, they don't have a 401k, or you work for several employers where you're always part-time. That's your option. How about if you work for a company and the company offer a qualified plan? Qualified plan, let's just for simplicity say, a retirement plan like a 401k plan. Under those circumstances, 
your deduction for your regular IRA will be reduced. And we're going to look at the reduction. Just know that there's always a limitation for everything. Okay? To, to extend, individual is ineligible to make a deductible contribution. You could always make a non-deductible IRA contribution. So you could always make contribution to, to, the, to the IRA. It may not be deductible, but you, you, have the right to put, you have the right to put money away for your retirement. You might be asking, well, hold on a second. Why would I do that if I don't get the deduction? Well, guess what? Income will accrue tax-free. It means, and this is important, let's assume you put today uh, 6500 in your account, in your IRA account. And you put this money in good investments, stocks. You invested in the latest technology. And next year, this 6500 grew to $10,000 in one year. Well, guess what? This growth of 3500 notice it went from 6500 to 10000 it accrues tax-free. It means you don't have to pay taxes on it today. When do you have to pay taxes? We'll talk about that later when you start to take this money out. So that's why you, are, you might be also interested in, in contributing to a non-deductible IRA. So this is what we're going to be discussing in this session. Starting, I want to show you where does the IRA contribution goes first, then look a little bit more about the details. Okay, so as I told you, the IRA contribution is deductible, and specifically, once it's deductible, it goes on Schedule 1, which is, it's going to go for, for AGI, and specifically, individual retirement account for the purpose of this example, it doesn't have to be in the same place every year, IRA deduction is on line 20. Notice it says IRA, so let's assume you put here 6500 then you add all your deductions, adjustment to income, and let's assume that's the only one, 6,500. Then the 6,500 will go on your 1040 above, above adjusted gross income, above adjusted gross income. So this is adjustment to income. It's going to reduce your income by 6,500. If you remember what I mentioned earlier, I said, if you are covered by a qualified plan, and I said, let's assume you work for a company and you have a 401k. Well, guess what? Your IRA deduction, what you can deduct for your IRA contribution, is reduced. Is reduced. Is reduced within an IRA an adjusted gross income rate uh, ranges. So if you're a single and you work for a company and you are part of a 401k, whether you contribute or not, you are part of it. You should contribute. Once your income starts to exceed 73,000 up to 83,000, so the range is 10,000. Once you enter this range, the 7, 73000 your adjusted gross income, your IRA deduction start to be reduced. And once you reach 83 and above, once you have 83000 and more, that's it. You can no longer deduct. Now, married filing jointly, you have a different range. Again, those ranges are for the year 2023. Obviously, they will change, but usually the range are the same. 10000 for single, 20000 for married filing jointly. For married filing separately, as always... As always, you do what? They penalize you. So as, as soon as you make $10,000, you can no, lo lo no longer contribute. Okay? Otherwise, if you don't, if you don't qualify, if, you don't, if you're not under a qualified 401k plan, there's no limitation. So if you, let's assume you don't work for any company. <laughs> let's assume that's the case. Uh, you work or you, you are freelance or you make, you, know, you make money here and there and you want to contribute your 401k. As long as you have earnings, you can contribute up to 6500 of deductible IRA. Now, bear in mind, once you qualify, and we're going to see an example, once you qualify, then the minimum, the minimum is $200. So you have to contribute at least there's a floor of $200. And we'll, we'll look at an example. Don't worry about this. Let's take a look at this example. Adam is single, 27 years old, earns a compensation of 80000 in 2023. He actively participates in his employer qualified retirement plan. So he worked for a company and they do have a 401k. Adam decides to contribute 6500 to a traditional IRA. Adam wants to even contribute as much as possible, 6500 Calculate the deductible amount for Adam's traditional IRA after factoring in the phase-out reduction. Well, let's see. Adam makes 80000 So 80000 minus 73, the beginning of the range, he's 7000 into the range. Remember, the range is 10000 This is the range. That's why I like to show you the picture. And he is 7000 into this range, like... 7,000 means 70% into the range. So 7,000 divided by 10, he's 70% into the range. 
Well, if his if he can if he contributed six thousand five hundred, he's going to be losing. And a, and, a, and, a, and a deduction contribution, 70% of that. So 70% of 6,500 is 4,550. He can contribute the 6,500. However, 4,550 will, will not be deductible, will not be deductible. The remaining, so let's see, 6,500 minus 4,550. So he can, oh my God, what a coincidence. 1950 is deductible and this has nothing to do with the 1950 that i showed you earlier the tax savings okay they're just coincident so he can contribute the 6500 however let me go back here show you so he can contribute but here he can only deduct 1900 of it is deductible okay 1950 not 1500 what if adam's earning were 82900 well if that's the case he is and the phase out up to 99%. If that's the case, up to 99%, the reduction of the 6,500, he will have to reduce it by 6,435 and he will be eligible mathematically for $65. Well, he can contribute $200. There's a minimum floor of $200. Also mathematically, if we use the formula at 65, this is what I meant by the floor, the minimum is 65. Let's talk about something we call spousal IRA. If both spouses have earned income, and I mentioned this earlier, ceiling on the deductible contribution is 13,000 or the combined income. If only one spouse has earned income, ceiling is 13,000 or the earned income of that spouse. Okay? Obviously, you must file jointly to get the spousal IRA. Now, alimony is considered earned income for the purpose of IRA contribution. Okay, so if a person is receiving alimony, it's considered income. Okay? A person whose only income is alimony can still contribute to an IRA. I'll tell you this. When I was, in co when, when I was working uh, back in 2011, 2012, my wife was in college. And guess what? I have earnings, and I had earnings more than 13000 My wife can, I have, I opened an IRA for my wife because she was in college, spousal IRA, and she was able to contribute the maximum for that year, whatever that year was. I believe it was 5000 and I still remember what we invested in, actually in Microsoft. And it was a good investment too. Really, really good investment. We make a good choice. We made a good choice. We don't always make a good choice in investments, but that was a good choice. So therefore, what you need to know is you can contribute. You can basically double it if you are married. So George, a married individual, is eligible to establish an IRA account. In the year 2023, his compensation was 125 while his spouse Bree does not work outside the home. So she doesn't work he works. Well, George has the option to contribute 13000 to two IRAs, which can be divided between the two spouses. Remember, IRA is, as it says, individual. So George will have to have an account and Bree will have to have an account as well. Two separate accounts. Okay? However, no more than 6500 can be allocated to either spouse. Let's assume Bree earned income is only 2500 It's fine. She can use his income to contribute 6500 Now, when can you contribute to your IRA. Well, guess what? The government is very generous. Let's assume we're looking at year X7. Then you have up till year X8, April 4th, April 15th to contribute. So although, although you are preparing your taxes for 20X7, they'll give you three and a half months of the following year to contribute. They just want to make it as easy as possible for you. If you extend, they don't, they don't use the extension April 15th, which is the original due date. And this, this applies both to deductible and non-deductible IRA. It means when we talk about Roth IRA, which will be next, it applies the same thing. They just want you to encourage you. So in case you forgot in 20X7 to contribute, they're, they're going to give you three and a half months in the following year the chance to contribute. Now let's talk about the taxation of IRA benefits, which is covered in when we talk about uh, when we talk about taxable income, but let's talk about this. Now when a participant makes deductible contribution, what does it mean deductible? It means when they contributed this money, they got a tax break. Tax break means they got a deduction. When they contribute this money to a traditional IRA and deduct them, their basis in the IRA is zero. If you're contributing money and that and your that money is you, you haven't paid taxes on it, it means your basis is zero. Therefore, any withdrawals from the IRA are subject to ordinary income tax in the year you receive. Again, this is we're talking about traditional, and I keep mentioning traditional. Why? Because we're going to have another IRA for a separate recording called Roth IRA. In a traditional IRA, 
if your contribution are deductible, remember, they could be deductible, they may not be deductible. Remember, if you can still contribute in a non-deductible way, but assuming it's deductible, your basis is zero. It means everything you take out, the principal plus the earnings is taxable. You remember, I contributed 6,500, it grew to 10,000. When I take the 10,000 out, I have to pay taxes on the 6,500, assuming I contributed this in a pre-tax money, and I have to pay taxes on the 3,500, all as ordinary income, which is the highest rate. Payment made to participant before the age of 59 and a half, which is, you have to wait until you're 59 and a half, are not included in the gross income, but are, all, that are not only included in gross income. So if you take any money before 59 and a half, they are subject to a 10% penalty. So remember, there's a penalty in case you take the money earlier. Also, withdrawal must be made before the age of 72. You might be saying, why does this rule exist? Why am I waiting to take my money until 72 if I can take it as early as 59 and a half? Well, because I have other sources of income. And if I have other sources of income, I don't have to take money out of my IRA. Maybe, the, you know, the, the stock market is not doing well. Therefore, I wait until the stock market is higher than I cash out my IRA. But why you must, that's the, that's the, that's the question, why you must take them? By the age of 72. Here's why. Because the government gave you the option to put to put money away tax-free. So when you took when you put this money, you did not pay taxes on it. And now the government can't wait until you take it out. Because once you take it out, this is when they take their share. So they give you from 59 and a half until 72. Kind of okay, you want to keep it, you want to keep it, that's fine, that's fine. But at 72, they want you to take it out. And there's a formula you have to use, the minimum distribution. Why? Because they want to tax you on it. It's as simple as that. Now, is there an exception for the 10% penalty in case you take the money earlier? There are exceptions, exceptions, exceptions apply, exceptions apply to 10 year to the 10% penalty. One, if you take this money for medical expenses, if you want to use this money for qualify higher education expenses, and for each, ex for each exception, there are specific rules that you have to follow. Qualify first term home buyer expense. You can take up to 10,000. Now I did take 10,000 out of my retirement account, not my IRA. That's also available for, for the 401k when I first bought my first home. Also, if an individual received unemployment compensation, what does that mean? It means the individual lost their job at least for 12 consecutive weeks. They can use IRA withdrawals. They can take money out for their health insurance and the insurance for their spouse dependent without the incurring the 10% penalty. So let's assume you lost your job and you are on un you receive an unemployment compensation. The government says, look, uh, if you need that money to pay for your health insurance because you're not employed, you have to pay for your health insurance. And if you know anything about health insurance in the US, it's expensive or for your spouse or your dependent, you can take it out. We will not charge you a penalty. Let's talk about rollover IRA. So sometimes what happens is this, you have an IRA account somewhere which is your individual account. Then you, then at some point you work for a company and this company have a 401k. And you might work for many companies and each company you work for, they open a 401k for you as an employee. So you have two 401ks. And you left this company. What you can do sometime, if it's allowed, you can take the money from your 401k and roll it over into your IRA. So this way you have all your money in one place. And you can, you know, from the other 401k, roll it over to your IRA. So if an individual retirement account receive a rollover from another qualified plan here, 401k, such an, such another, or another, it could be another IRA, the distribution from the qualified plan will not be considered part of the recipient gross income. So when you do a rollover, but you have to do it properly, when you move money from a 401k to an IRA, or from one IRA to another IRA, that's fine, as long as you roll it over. What does it mean, roll it over? You can cash it out, this applies as long as the distribution is transferred to another IRA or to another qualified plan within 60 days of receipts. So you get the money immediately. We have 60 days, but put that money in the other account. Let's take a look at this example. Noah makes a withdrawal of 18,000 from his traditional IRA on May 15, 20X3, effectively closing his account. However, he promptly deposits these funds into a different traditional IRA on June 10th. This is what a rollover is. This transaction qualifies as a rollover and does not generate any gross income for Noah in the year 20 extra. And you have to be very careful when dealing with those. Better keep it for the professional. Don't see the money. Just call both companies says, I need to roll, roll the money from this account to another account. One of them will handle it. Either the, usually it's the receiving company because they want your money. They will, they will handle everything. Let them handle it. In this way, 
the event is not taxable. You don't have to include that money in your gross income and you have your money all in one place. My advice to you is this personal advice. Start to invest as early as possible. No one told me this. I, I, I started investing late. OK, whatever you can invest early and that money will accumulate. Believe me, what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs, multiple choice questions to understand these topics better. Whether you are a CPA candidate, accounting student, or an enrolled agent, you need to understand this topic. Or as an individual, as a citizen, for your own benefit, good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.